Yeah, it's always great to talk to you, Mike. Uh, we're going to uh, move on here for an instant and, and, and bring back in Tim Call of Capital Management Group. He's a CIO there. And uh, Uri Man, is it Uri or is it Yuri? Uri, yeah, Uri. thank you. Just want to make man. sure you get that one right. You're, you're such a great guest to have. We have Good to make morning. sure you call your right name. Uri Man, a financial analyst for us. I believe you're down. Are you down in Florida, Uri? Where are you? Looks sunny. Yeah. Yes, I'm in the nice warm weather. Uh -huh. It's cold today. That means it's 50. It's only 55. <laughs> Thanks. So Rub it in. We're enjoying Rub it the in. nice weather here. You know, poor Tim and I, we're just in the snow up here. Uh, Tim, based on what you heard from Mike, again, it's not a done deal. But is there any way that you look to position your portfolio now that we see that this obstacle to the, the bill passing in the Senate is now no longer an obstacle? What do you do as an investor right now? Well, knowing that uh, they, they don't have any votes to spare in the Senate makes it uh, more likely that the version that gets passed will be the Senate version or, or very close to it. Uh, so uh, you, you look at the healthcare stocks and which ones were priced uh, for a worst case scenario, uh, in which case the Senate bill is thought of as not a worst case scenario. Uh, the health insurance companies should benefit uh, compared to where they've been priced. Uh, other companies might benefit from higher volumes eventually uh, as people get more benefits. But of course, the taxes are front loaded in this plan and the benefits uh, aren't achieved for several years. So I think short term we get a bounce in healthcare stocks because it's not the um, worst bill imagined. Sure. Uh, it, it, it might not be a good bill for healthcare stocks, but being not the worst, you should get a temporary bounce. And then the reality will set in that we have years of taxes and then we get some increased usage in the out years. All right, Uri. So then Tim was saying, you know, you might want to take a look at some of these healthcare stocks that might have a little bit of a ways to go as far as the rally. Uh, they've done very well or relatively well over the last couple of weeks. What sectors would you avoid? Do you avoid consumer discretionary sectors? Because as Tim mentioned, we're going to see these taxes if a bill does indeed pass. Uh, you know, that, that's a sector you might want to avoid. I mean, I'll agree with Tim that just generally, the healthcare sector has, has lagged behind these uh, other sectors that have done well in the last quarter. So, just generally investing in the healthcare sector, uh, especially considering we don't know where the economy is, uh, it's a good place to put your money because generally it's counter cyclical and you're, you're able to uh, maintain some momentum even as the economy is moving in the wrong direction. So, I think the important thing here is with this bill is from uh, the, the whole idea of everybody going to a public option is gone. So the Armageddon scenario of all these insurers losing their customers is no longer, um, no, no longer, uh, there's no longer a potential for that. So uh, in general, you'll see insurance uh, companies doing pretty well uh, going forward for the next quarter. Um, and also the big pharmaceutical companies, like Tim mentioned, uh, they'll do well because they'll have expanded uh, populations to serve. More than 30 million more Americans will have health insurance and uh, that those changes will take place over years, but the gains in the stock prices could be recognized uh, pretty quickly over the next quarter. Good point. All right, Tim, Uri, thank you so much. We'll be talking again in just a short while. Just want to get in some other news headlines here. Uh, it, this one having to do with AIG, our investment as taxpayers. Robert Ben Moshe.